This podcast contains adult language, descriptions of violence, sexual references, and other possibly offensive themes. Listener discretion is advised. Previously on Back to the Story. You feel the rumble of thunder when it roars, the excitement of the lightning as it strikes, all the merry that is her. Maybe it's harder than I thought it was. Wish me luck. And I'm going to jump in. As you're trying to think of what to do and what can you do, lightning slams into you. You can feel now the scarred, burnt skin on your back burning as you're flying head over heels towards the storm below. Hello? Hello? Hey. Did y'all catch all of that before it froze? We caught Ellery falling into the ocean, and it went dark, and then she okay. heard it, and that's where we stopped. <laughs> okay, good. All right. So, Ellery, after falling into the sea and sinking down into the darkness, your vision goes dark. The sounds of the thunder and the waves crashing uh, fall distant, almost to silence few moments pass and you feel a sudden tug shaking yourself awake once again you're under the water you look up and you can see the waves rolling above you you're being pulled towards them by a man he has you by the collar of your clothes and is pulling you up coming out of the surface of these massive waves you fly as he lifts you into the air against the rain, and above into the clouds. There's a thunder and lightning roaring around as he flies higher and higher. He looks down towards you, shaking you wet, shaking you awake. That was stupid. Brave, but stupid. Uh, who who are you? Gath, a tempest. He flies up and into the most turbulent part of the storm, and suddenly the storm changes. It's almost as if he's flying with the wind, and suddenly the turbulence doesn't die down but shifts to carry you as you see the ocean far below, a couple miles passing quickly underneath you as you're traveling. And you are? Uh, My name is Ellery. You'd be dead. You got lucky. Thank you. You see that ahead? And as you shift your gaze, you see a storm wall of what looks like a hurricane. And he's flying towards it. Yes. It's gonna be rough, but it'll get us back. Grit your teeth. Okay. As he slams into it, you feel yourself shaking. The vision goes dark once again, and you're almost deafened by the thunderous roar. And in this hurricane storm, you still hear these almost words again. You can't make them out, but you can almost hear words being roared through the storm. A few more moments pass before you find yourself floating down, rain still cascading above. Looking down, you see a large building with an open ceiling, rain kind of falling down with you towards it. The rest of you see as you're waiting in this temple, suddenly rain coming down the open ceiling and drifting down. You see Ellery being held by her clothes, by the shoulder of her clothes by a man. You can see lightning and wind whipping around him as he floats down towards the base of the dome and kind of lets her down. As he lands, the storm kind of dissipates around him, though the inside of the temple is still tempest-like, but has calmed somewhat after he lands. Well, I'm not sure what I was expecting. Thank you, again. Was it a woman who told you? Yes. (sighs) Ascari, she's a bit of a zealot. 
She means the well, though. Rest up. Come find me later. Okay, I will. Uh, what does he look like, by the way? You see, he's a human with fairly palish skin. He has dark brown, nearly black hair that's cut fairly short. Um, he is a kind of a five o'clock shadow going on, and he's wearing pretty simple leathers on him. You can see upon the leathers now that you're kind of getting a good look at them. There are runes kind of seared into them. As he turns around, you can see sort of a half sash, not quite a cape, like a half cape off one of his shoulders, the buckle of which you see a lightning bolt that's kind of holding that half cape over his shoulder. Um, as he turns up, and he's in his late 40s, maybe early 50s, as he walks up the steps um, and looks down into the storm, his eyes glossing over with a light blue tint, um, watching. Does does Kari send people to do that a lot? The light fades from his eyes once again as he kind of looks over his shoulder. She's done it before, yes. If they're lucky, they wash up on a shore somewhere. If they're not, well, at least their last moments were with Walter Mary. There would be worse ways to go. Indeed. He looks back towards the storm, his eyes beginning to gloss over um, as he speaks once more. Then me consult with Sky's Thunder. Find me when you're ready. I just nod this time. And his back is now to you as he's looking into the swirl. And I go over to my friends. Hillary is soaking wet. There's a few sear marks from lightning bolts. Her ears, you can see blood dripping down the side from the concussive sound of the thunder. Oh. And some reason she's smiling. I I think I'm laughing a little bit, too. I'm going to cast Cure Wounds at <laughs> second level. I'm going to cast Prestidigitation and start drying her off. I am still a dog, so I will just nuzzle her leg. <laughs> I will scratch as he gill behind the ears. Um, do y'all exit the temple? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. As you try to dry her inside of it, it immediately uh, <laughs> she just stays wet. Not great. It's only nine points of damage. Oh, no. Sorry. I'm not paying attention to my soul cards. Fifteen. Go 15. Thanks, Vesper. Yeah, are that, you right? Uh, that fucking hurt. Sorry, I encourage you. And maybe that wasn't the best advice for me to follow, but I, I don't regret it, even so. Ow. Would it help if Fall carried you? <laughs> Fall, will you carry me? Yeah, he does. <laughs> sure. <laughs> And you guys, as you're outside the temple, you can see the sun is beginning to set. It's cold here. Even though the outer growth where Sigma's forces were, the wind was almost warm. The climate temperate enough to sustain life, nature, and growth of forest. But inside the city itself, it's, it's cold. Covered in snow on all the buildings and upon the floor. And you can see a bit of frozen sleet and precipitation drifting down. Uh, give me my cloak back, please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will turn back and very quickly shape water to get everybody dry. You are a lifesaver. So uh, that that could have been it. That could have gone very poorly. But I'm here. Well, we'll be thankful for that. You got a little roughed up, though. Yeah, it's okay, though. Well. I Oh, go ahead. I wasn't sure before if I was just imagining it, but I think I could hear her. Well, uh we'll see how that develops and what that develops into. I'm glad yeah, you had a good I, experience though. Yeah. You know, this this whole thing has been real fucking weird. I guess faith can be like that sometimes. When was the last time we had a day that wasn't fucking weird? Good question. We were, just before Allie went to prison, I think we were maybe 18. No, because there was, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> I think we were 11. <laughs> and ever since then. 
<laughs> really, ever since we all met each other. So kind of. You know, that woman was talking about faith, and and I was talking about faith. I think it's never really been that I haven't had... Well, okay, it hasn't really been that long since I've been trying to to follow Volta Mary. But the problem has never really been a lack of faith in her. I think it's just been a lack of faith in myself. I didn't know if if she would even want me as a follower. But I think she's worth following whether she wants me or not. Then I think you have nothing to worry about. That man who brought me back. I'm pretty sure I would have died if he hadn't been there. Well, God's blessing for being there, then. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else we want to do? Vesper? Are you ready? Like I said, I don't think there's such a thing as being ready. I think we're just given the obstacle and we have to rise over it, no matter what. So let's go. <laughs> I'm going to hop down and, and walk from here. I guess we go to the Redemption Zenith. Okay. So you guys move into this district. And as you're traveling about and getting a better feel for the city, the architecture is similar but slightly different in each area, as if it was once several different cities very close together, uh, but have since been since then kind of grown to be one large, spread-out city. But moving towards the zenith, you can see there is a, a hill that raises up. You can see in this district the architecture is uh, smaller, simpler, and the district itself is slightly smaller than some of the others. The Vallisols, um, the Lustrous Citadel, Volta Mary's Wonders Respite, the Halls of Valor. So these are very large, and this one's a little smaller. As you enter in, you see a few ends. You see a larger stone building with a sign that says Hope Stone Hospital. You see an orphanage. You see various healers. You see a few alchemists and herbalists shops set up. And towards the center of this ward, you see a central hill that raises up a little higher. Upon it, you see a white stone temple. It's tall, and atop it, you see a sort of rising platform where it's flat on the top. You see, flying through the now night as the sun is setting, uh, wings, riders upon them, with eagles' heads, griffins, flying through the air with riders. You see some of them towards the temple on the hill, landing on one of the high platforms, going inside where it looks like there's an area for the griffins. Moving towards the building, you can see there are guardians. You can see they wear mostly robes, but with pauldrons, arm, arm guards, and you can see they wear metal masks with a lion's face upon them um, as they kind of watch and look at you as you walk in. You can see um, now, as you get closer, that upper area where the griffins landed, you can see them tossing pieces of meat for them to tear into and eat uh, for the griffins. As you head up the steps into this stone white I think, temple. I think Vesper stops at the bottom of the stairs for a minute. Just okay. kind of, I don't know. She's smiling, but she looks nervous. Her fingers are shaking a little bit. I put a hand on her shoulder. We're here. Hey, Vesper. Mm -hmm. You're braver than me. So, if I can go jumping into a storm, you can do this. Yeah, just, it's a lot. Finally be here. Okay. And I kind of reach Ramson's hand, if you'll let me take it. Uh, sure. Okay. And then she'll take his hand and we'll go up the stairs. Taking his hand and leading up the stairs, you walk up um, and walking through a large doorway, the doors of which have been opened, revealing inside a fairly large room with columns 
uh, large but simple columns that hold the ceiling up. Inside you see a number of benches set up around various altars inside the place where you see a number of other pilgrims or other travelers and a few others that are laid on top of these altars where you see people, um, healers administering aid, healing wounds, curing sicknesses. You can see towards the right and left there are large windows, but almost glassless, and yet you can feel as if it, the wind outside is blocked. Cold air outside is no longer here, and inside the sound is muffled, quiet. The sounds of the city outside can't penetrate within these walls. North, across this room, you can see another doorway, open as well. To get there, you have to cross over a ring, a small moat of water. It's only about a foot thick that runs around the altars where the people are healing. Getting to the other side, you see this open doorway, where inside you see again another moat that runs all along the edges of this next room, where inside you see staircases leading up to another level. You see a few other pilgrims head up, one of them carrying a child. As you move along with them up the stairs, you get to the top and you can see a platform where there is a pool of water. You see there's a short line of three or four people that are kind of waiting at the edge. As you see one kind of older gentleman kind of wading into this water. Pure, clear, crystalline waters. Standing in the water, you see an older female, maybe mid-fifties. Even in her age, she has strong cheekbones. And from here, you can see her bluish-green light eyes, blonde hair pulled back as she takes the man and pulls him into the water. You can see the light glows from her hands as he is pulled out of the water, smiling. You see the man that limped in walks out, unhampered, as the next person in line kind of steps and walks in to the waters. Can we? Can I get in line? Yeah. Okay. You see the next couple people go in as this woman speaks words to them. Sometimes in that language you understand, sometimes not. Um, and eventually, one after another, they come out. Can I pull uh, out the griffin feathers uh, uh, before I get to the water? Yeah. Okay. I'm just holding for now. She looks up at you. Child, do you need healing? No. I've come for something more. She kind of waves out of the pool towards you. For what? I... I'm a devoted follower of AIE, and I have been my entire life. And I came for training to take my vows. I came to bring these home. And I hold out the white feathers. Sarah Fardiather charged me with bringing these here. She spoke to you. She did. Come this way. She exits the water and then kind of walks around the other side. Where on the other side there's a doorway in reversing back around a stairway that leads to the next level, heading up. Uh, I will follow her. Okay. Following up, you're entered into another room. Um, this one you see a fairly simple room. There's a small ring of columns, of eight columns. In the center, there's a fairly simple altar, really not much more than a box of white stone. She takes her still wet hands and places them towards your forehead. The cleansing tears of Ai. This is the altar of her graciousness. This is what happened. What was born when she became divine. Beyond her servitude. This is where she rested. She helped the other gods after the ruination, the rebellion, and the betrayal. This is all. As close to it as we can dag it. Uh, I will uh, lay the feathers on the altar. As you place them one by one, when the last one is placed, a small spark of light emits from the base of each, slowly growing up each feather, along each vein of each thread of the feathers themselves until they have a very dim 
silver golden glow. They begin to rise into the air, locking into the positions of six wings, and as they kind of seem to emit and grow, you can see a almost spectral figure standing, not quite there, but nearly, of a woman with six wings, almost what you saw before. You see immediately the woman you were with kneels down before it, bowing her head. Seraphah, she whispers under her breath. The spectral angel looks down at both of you and floats down, her feet touching the white stone of the sacred place. First places a hand upon the woman who brought you here. A bit of light cascades around her as she kind of exhales as if a relief has been brought off her shoulders. And then she turns to you, and her mouth doesn't move, yet she speaks. You've brought me home, to God's rest, to Sakador, to Naimunat. You have served Ayayin. No heart is cleansed, but you must steel yourselves for the troubles that come. Whispers on the wind, the harbingers, when they come. Old faith. And as she pulls her spectral hand from your shoulders, um, she dissipates into silver and gold dust. And as the hand is pulled off, you feel a weight lifted off of you. All the pressure, anything that's ever gone wrong, pain, sores, bruises from all, any of the past years are suddenly lifted as if you've been cleansed redeemed, born anew. The room settles back down into its sort of dim glow from the silvery, watery moat that runs around its edge as the woman beside you kind of eventually gets to her feet once more. Even as the redeemed, I can speak no higher than Diatha Seraphah. She speaks it so you are redeemed. Vesper takes a minute. She's definitely lo had a loss for words. I'm, I'm just, uh, there's no way to say it without sounding it's like I'm. Normally, admittedly, more formal, word spoken, vows, but when a seraphah comes, she speaks truth. She kind of chuckles, really realizing something. I'm a living nudon, by the way. Realizing she hadn't even introduced herself or said her name, nor does she know yours. Vesper, Fidelis. My father, um, Ferris Aurelio, came here a long time ago. I don't recall his name, but I haven't been in this position long. You have a place here, should you need it. If it is training, I can help guide you as best I can. I, th I, think, I'd, I think I'd like that. While you, you see by her side there's a simple mace of silver beside her. Do you serve Ayayin by fighting, by healing? Through healing. I will send you to work with the hospitals, curing ailments and injuries. Thank, thank you. I'm glad you've come here. Yeah. Please. And she kind of leads you. And as she's walking, you're walking out of this room, feel free to visit this place whenever you desire. Downstairs there are bunks, simple but comfortable. If you help heal in the hospitals, we can supply with food and supplies. Come visit me tomorrow, ask for me, and I will contact the surgeons who will train you. Thank you so much. And as she kind of walks you towards the edge of the room, she kind of waits there to go back to pray. She kind of leaves you and lets you... I wander down the stairs once more. I'll go back to the others. Best for Fidelis, the redeemed. How does it sound? Sounds right. Nice. Does it mean something? <laughs> Diether appeared again. And she took away my sins, I guess. And it feels... I feel new. Like a fresh start. And I have my title, and I'm going to say 
here for a time and train the hospitals and and learn what I need to know. I hug Vesper. I hug her back. <laughs> so now you're a high and mighty priestess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, you were already high and already pretty mighty, so. But now it's official. <laughs> Thank you all for, for walking with me here. Thank you for inviting us along. I couldn't have made it without any of you. We couldn't have made it without you. That's what family's for. We need each other. Yeah. I'm going to kind of reach back, uh, reach up and tuck that bit of white hair behind her ear. (laughs) That's getting late. We can... Anything else we need to do before we go to bed? Uh, How about we celebrate? Yes, exactly. (laughs) I think that sounds like a great idea. Ezekiel, would you like to join us? I can tag along. Uh, I don't think I have to get back to Outer Grove before morning. We should celebrate. Yeah. I'll throw an arm around Ezekiel as we go. (laughs) Um, and are you all heading back to the inn, or...? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. But can we go to, like, the more lively one across the street for the actual yeah. drinking? Yeah. I don't even drink, and I don't want to be in that uptight part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely more of, like, a family-ish establishment. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's a nightclub the, across the street. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a Ruby Tuesdays or something, or a Longhorns. Oh. <laughs> and yeah. across the street is the uh, the party, the party house. Yeah, you guys head back. It's probably eight or nine ish at this point. Getting late, maybe nine thirty. As you guys head back, eventually finding the inn, um, and across the street the public house at World's End, where it looks pretty lively. People. Drinking, listening to music, uh, singing, uh, kind of joining in songs that they seem to all know, um, sloshing beer, and what have you, on the uh, the ground. Yeah, this is the place. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Yeah, inside it's filled with all sorts of people. Humans, dwarves, half-orcs. You even see a few of stranger heritage that you're not quite as familiar with. Um, drinking, serving beer and mixed drinks, shots, um, as people are singing along these, um, to these songs. I get us around of shots. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Five, five copper each for a kind of a cheap shot, a silver each for a nicer brand. This yeah, silver. Half work. Um, tall for half work pours them up <laughs> quickly. Little simple wooden cups. Oh, yeah, I'll get a fruit juice for Ezekiel. Or, like, can I get him, like, a Shirley Temple? At least something nice. <laughs> uh, we have uh, sangria. No, he it's doesn't drink alcohol. Fruity. He doesn't uh, drink alcohol. I know. It's uh, really surprising, actually, if you knew him. All right, I'll figure something out. And she digs around and eventually produces some slightly tannish-colored liquid. Mostly clear, though. Looks kind of like tea, but it's cold. All right, yeah. <laughs> Take it back to the table. Okay. You guys take it back. You have your shots. Well, the destinations. The destinations. <laughs> you down your shots. For those of you with alcohol, it burns. It's like rubbing alcohol. It's cheap, but it tastes like rubbing alcohol. Ezekiel, as you down yours, it's ginger flavor. It's ginger ale of some sort. It may be a little bit of alcohol, but not uh, not too much. Uh, as it goes down, it's pretty sweet, delicious. The others are coughing a little bit as you finish your shots. Mm. Mm. Well, it wasn't smooth, but it was good. <laughs> Interesting choice of drink, though. Yeah, I think I'll pass on any more of those. Thank you. Um, so, just really quickly, uh, how long do you think we're going to be in nine minutes? Oof. Well, I have to talk to... Uh, Redeemed Olivia tomorrow, so I'll see what she says about how long my training might take, and from there we can kind of decide if any of the rest of us have stuff we need to do. I'm sure Ezekiel and Ellery are both very busy. 
Calvin probably too once he gets back on his feet. Well, it's it's a good opportunity to look into some things. Definitely. I think we need to put our heads together about some of the things that we've learned, some of the things that we've experienced. Mm-hmm. I have them like the plague, but you could check out the Temple of Severa. <sighs> I mean, maybe we can look around at other options first. <laughs> the ones here are probably nicer than the ones in Love's at White Card. I know, I'm not going to bet on that. Oh, right. I forgot that we went there. I already like most of the people in temples here more than the ones in White Guard. <laughs> I think speaking, I just like this whole place better than White Guard. <laughs> speaking of White Guard, it may be hoove of us to check out the Temple of Wolfrath. See if they have any deeper understanding of this war and whether White Guard's ambitions are sated for the moment. Oh, that reminds me. Um, When I went up stairs... Diether referred to this place as God's Rest. That makes oh, sense. Okay. We yeah. should probably tell Bull. We should definitely tell Bull. Yeah. Since he's wandered off. Do you think this might also be the place that Angel was talking about? Sacred land? Possibly. It's, it's pretty sacred. Well, if we're worried about it being surrounded by armies, we can at least try and check off white guard as those armies. I can't see why they might come here, but I don't understand much about civilization's ambitions. What worries me, one of the many things that worries me, Ezekiel, Mother Willow said something about the stars changing, and I can't help but think about Starfall again. If the stars are changing, maybe something's happening. And while I do hate to bring it up, that place we discovered, weren't they talking about look to the sky? Look to the sky. Black star. Black star. Now, I know I've brought up fate before, but there's a lot of things that have been coming together in all of us and all of our different connections brought to this place passing the things that we saw there's got to be something here for all of us I know that my mission has to do something here and the rest of you were all brought here for one reason or another I think we should plan on being here for a while I may have to run home for a bit I've got some of the druids checking in on the place but we left before we could check in on Briarbridge and the hunt I'm nervous yeah But I can make it back there pretty swiftly, so if we're going to be around this area for a while, I don't mind making a run. Yeah. Um, Maybe check in Arizona, too. Of course, I'd like to bring her back to the Grove. That's part of the reason Mm -hmm. why I went on to go back, but... If you go, do you mind if I tag along, or would that slow you down? I don't think so. I mean, maybe a little, but not consequentially. Uh think I need to at least talk to the keepers at the Outer Grove first, and I should get word soon about the state of things. I can wait till then. Are these problems for tomorrow, us? Or <laughs> should we delve into anything more while the four of us are here? I think it's a yeah. tomorrow problem. I oh. think so, too. <laughs> I think we want all of us together to talk some of this over. Yeah, and they'll give Calvin some time to process stuff. Maybe he'll be better in the morning. Yeah, I might need some time to process stuff. <laughs> that lightning fucking hurts. Are you okay? Do you need more healing? Uh, I could use some more. Okay. Cure wounds. <laughs> I'll use another second level. We should be going to bed soon, I hope. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. That definitely helps. Good. I think some rest will take care of the rest. Any more drinks before we head back, then? I will take another drink. I as well. Absin? Uh, Is sure. That, sangria? that probably sounds better. Sure, why not? Okay. Sounds great. Uh, Ezekiel, do you want anything at all? No, I'm fine. And he pulls out a little pouch and a pipe. I'm gonna go step outside for a minute. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Uh, I'll go get three glasses of sangria for the rest of us. Okay. The sangria is a silver each for whoever's getting it. As Ezekiel, you go outside, uh, lighting your pipe in the cool, snowy weather outside. I don't think I have anything else for tonight. Okay. Just getting Eventually. high. <laughs> um, are you all continuing to, to drink and just... I think that's oh. the basic plan for tonight. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Go to bed and figure out where everyone's staying because there's only five rooms. Okay. Um, so you guys eventually drink until however much you wanted to drink. Each drink is five copper for crap and a silver for a decent. And you get as wasted as you want, but it's not a big deal because you stumble across through the snow whenever it is you go to bed to the inn across the street um, where you stumble up the stairs and find some bed. Ball's probably sleeping on the floor because the bed will break and his knees are hanging off. But eventually you can all find rest and taking it. Waking up the next morning, your first full day starting in Nyman Hut. It's somewhat cold, windy outside, but um, you otherwise wake. You can smell food being cooked below as you guys knock on each other's doors and eventually gather all, uh, gather up together, though some of you may have slept in later than others. If Ezekiel is heading to the Vivis tree, Ellery wanted to go with him on that. I need to go back to the temple. And I'm going to need to go back to uh, the temple of Altamari as well. Okay. Uh, Amson, did you have anything that you were thinking off the top of your head uh, for today? Not specifically, no. So I might go with Vesper for a while. And okay. if they're going to start her training, like, immediately, then I'll Amson would probably stand around a little bit, see that he's not much of a help, and go find something else to do. Okay. Uh, if not, he'll probably Let's, just stay with Vesper. Okay. Um, let's do Ezekiel first, since Ezekiel hasn't done as much this session. So, Ezekiel, you, you wake up and you want to go find Mother Willow? Yeah, if she's oh. still there. No, not Mother Willow. I, I was going to... Uh, to the Vivis? Yeah, to the Vivis tree. If she's still there, then that's cool. But I don't know if she went home. And I just saw your message. Was Were there any things you guys wanted to identify or you want to worry about that later? I'm curious uh, about we can, the thing I found. but We can do that like first thing in the morning before we split off. There was someone dead. I didn't feel like asking before this, but like, I'm really curious as to what this thing is. Uh, what is this thing? Uh, it is the circle of like roots and thorns I found on the bugbear druid. Right. That I, don't, way. I don't know if it's anything, but... Amson will identify it, and he'll ritually cast it, so it'll take a little while, but yeah. Ritually casting and looking at it, it looks to be a druidic symbol of some sort. Druidic uh, casting focus. Okay, just normal. Mm-hmm. Uh, the origins look... The energy is different than a Sigma, but not Duma. Just different. Okay, I put it in the bag. Kind of disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> and I it's know it's an awoken th- root. <laughs> <laughs> it's a baby Groot. I know this is totally random, uh, but I honestly do not remember if we identified it. This is a callback to like 30 sessions ago, but I realize that I have Identify now, and I've been carrying around that Champion of Morthom necklace since like episode 13 or whatever. Can I identify that, please? (laughs) Yep. Frantically (laughs) finding it in the notes from 30 sessions ago. I guess I can tell you at least that. Uh, Identifying it, it is, looks to be, well, it was a holy symbol devoted to Morthom. Though the, whatever power that radiated because of that is uh, gone dormant. However, it maybe also does something else. Were there any other things you guys were identifying? Uh, I did want to take a look at the stuff that we got from the Black Paw outpost. Okay. I will send you that. I'll go ahead and put the, as you guys open the chest, which I guess Ball has just been looking around. You find that inside? Coins, gems, 
clothes, weapons, ledgers, etc. The clothes inside are like nicer, velvetish, um, a few cloaks, a few robes, and just they're a bit nicer, not basic linen. The w- few weapons that are in there, you see a silver dagger, and you see a ornamental short sword, kind of a, a scimitar. It doesn't look like it'd be good in battle, but it is pretty. I see that look on your face, Vesper. Hang on. <laughs> I may need to uh, detect magic before I touch it in case it's cursed, but yeah. um, I am that dagger for sure. I have it, so I can do it. Okay. Uh, are any of the, the weapons magical? Uh, no. The okay. dagger is silvered, but it's not magical. Uh, it doesn't look Actually, like it's going to eat your soul. There is there is magic actually since you detect. I'm not sure who has it, but the Iron Morning Star is magic. Did you take that? I don't know. I, th- that I think Ball I said that he did. wanted to grab it. I'm taking that silver dagger though. Because uh, I have an empty sheath on my belt now that I gave Calvin his back. Do you identify the Morning Star? I think Ball took it. So he has it. Sure. I'll do that too. Okay. Going through this uh sort of assembly line of identifying and sorting what you guys have. This is the Morning Star of Coal. It's about four feet long with spiked sphere on its end. The metal is dark ironed and covered in soot that seemingly can't be wiped off or washed. The sphere itself at the top with the spikes has a lockable cage where there are four windows uh, around it uh, where you can see ash and coal and embers kind of extinguished but falling out. Where it would normally you could place these burning embers and black smoke would rise as you saw the commander had it with this burning red eye of coals in the center. So the weapon is enchanted, and though it requires fuel in the form of coal or any other burnable substance, it will magically stay lit for far longer than normal, 24 hours under standard conditions. It'll shed dim light in a 10 foot radius, and the weapon deals plus one, one d8, plus one piercing with one hand. Or plus one, one d ten, plus one with two hands. Uh, if the coal is actively lit within the weapon, it deals an additional one d four fire damage. As with any fire, the fire can be extinguished, but the enchantment makes it a little harder to do so. I'm interested in just kind of glancing over the ledgers, seeing what those are. Uh, glancing over, it looks like traveling merchants' ledgers, where they just have like a list of goods that they have, some sale prices. Some of the books have been half destroyed either by the fire or blood covering them from whenever the bugbears raided these traveling merchants. You can read into them more in depth if you want to, but that's the gist. Hey, Ezekiel, if and when you head back home, might want to take these with you. Books! Yay! Well, I figure they're probably going to be useful to whoever they were taken from if those people survived. Mm. And... That's... Optimistic. I'm trying to be more optimistic in my life. We can take them back. Maybe Nagin will want them. Yeah. If nothing else, it might be useful to the people who have been dealing with these bugbears the most. Do we need to hang on to these gems for anything, or should we just go ahead and sell them? I say we sell them and buy diamonds. Yeah, I was planning on diamonds. Uh, I'm definitely looking through the clothes and seeing if there's anything that fits me. Maybe something for winter. Yeah, Maybe kind of something mm-hmm. with pants. Keep through those. There's a most of the clothes is too big for Ellery. There is a cloak that has like dark blue outside, and on the inside it's sort of a velvet red. Um, it looks resistant mm-hmm. to rain on the outside. Now this this is right up my alley. Is there anything that would fit Vesper? That's like still kind of you know fashion. Like if it's ugly, I'm not taking it. Uh, there's, there's a robe that's fairly nice and maybe a bit or ornamental, but there's a robe that would fit you. It's of light blue. Okay. I will take that then. And to clarify it, even though it's ornamental, it's not like a wearing, it's not like a priest ornamental robes. It's like a soft snuggie. It's like a relaxing robe. robe. Hmm. A relaxing robe? Yeah. <laughs> I will take it. Well, let me... Do a little bit of math so we can divide up this coin. Unless we want to have a fund just for all of us. Uh, that's actually probably a good idea. That's a really good idea. We Maybe figure out a way to carry it. Well, mm-hmm. one thing I was thinking is that we should try and to like, find something like Calvin's 
bag of colding, but better, bigger. That's what I was thinking of, too. And if a couple of us have one, you know, we can store whatever we want whenever we want. Because we don't want Ball to have to carry everything all the time. It's really not fair for him. Well, presumably we're done with accounting and we figured that yeah. out. Do we want to go? Well, I guess we all have things to do today. Yeah. And so we do them. <laughs> and scatter. Anyway, you guys look over this stuff and then split going your separate ways. We're going to hop over to Ezekiel first, who eventually exits this district, moving through a few others, heading back towards the old growth, this force that surrounds the city in a ring. Um, as you do so, you do pass through the um, the Wolfrath Halls. Um, if you want to stop there along the way, otherwise you can continue and do that later. Mm, no, I thought about it. I'm probably the wrong person to talk, considering they were using uh, those Gothrian mercenaries. So I'm going to avoid that for now until someone who doesn't look like an enemy is with me. I'm tagging along with Ezekiel, but I'm not real inclined to talk to these people right now anyway. You guys pass through this area where you see number of armored warriors, some of which have a distinct red sash along their side, who you hear people whispering, calling them vanguards, some of which are riding upon dire wolves. A familiar sight. As you guys pass through this fortified citadel area, you exit the city, walking through the pale row, the slums, the sort of shanty town where people they don't have much coins. Pilgrims that got here and spent every coin they had just to get here um, stay. Further beyond that, you enter into the old growth. Ezekiel, give me a survival roll just to see how long it takes you to... That okay. is what? 22. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, with that, you remember where you were, not but the other day, and are able to move into the old forest. As soon as you do... It's still cold and in places there's snow on the ground, but there's almost a warm wind that keeps this area able to sustain life in nature. Um, you can hear birds and small creatures. You even see a deer or two, or I'm sorry, in this area be a uh, elk kind of tr 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 running along. And as you move through this old growth forest, you head back towards where you were before, where you saw that sort of alcove of trees, where you see the a few wolves, sled dogs. You see the old man, Titus Great Snow, the keeper, who took you all into the city the other day, who's smoking on a pipe as you approach. Looks like he's stretching leather across something, working on something on the sled. Nice to see you again. Mm hmm. You look in the willow. If she's still around, I wouldn't mind talking to her, but you're a keeper, right? Right. Well, one of the circles. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm supposed to talk to you. He kind of puts down the leather strap he was working on. About what? About this. And I'll bring out my thingy, my stone map. Okay. You pull out this circular stone tablet with marks upon it of various constellations and stars, though it's so overlaid as if someone carved tons of them on top of each other. It's really hard to make out any sort of discernible pattern. Um, he kind of looks it over. Uh, you always with Willow? Not my whole life, but since I started walking this path, yeah. Mm. You know her grove, Moonlight. She's the keeper of it. I'm the keeper of Tundra. As he kind of gestures around in his little alcove of trees, the snow isn't melted as much as it is in the other old growth. He kind of keeps this this way, sustains it this way. There's bushes with tiny red berries that seem to thrive in this cold environment. Nature lives in these circles. Willow told me about this. I asked around a bit. Trying to... See if I can come up with something. Close as I could. There's an old circle. One that doesn't exist anymore. A part of nature that deals with the sky, and not the nor, not the ground. A circle of stars. 
Apparently there used to be groves in the sky. However, that works. But as those expanded, there was one who took it in a wrong direction. Drove it from nature. They called that one the Circle of the Black Star. Did you say the Black Star? Hmm. Black Star. It was a druid grove. They were able to move through the stars as some of us can move through trees. But when the Black Star came, that all stopped. What records lies in the bog has been largely forgotten or intentionally removed. There was a name, a name I don't know much about, who supposedly was the keeper of this Black Star Circle, this grove in the sky, Nerocene. She was a druid, a keeper of a circle of stars, and she's the one who created the Black Star. It wiped out. Stars fell upon the other groves and circles of stars. Black stars wiped them out. Whatever druidic force was once pushing those circles was lost. Nerocene was pushed back, defeated, and... Well, we haven't heard much of it ever since. Can't even find much info on it, to be honest. That's what I know. Now this could be something those groves used before. Groves of stars. What it means, what it can do, well, I haven't figured that out yet. When I first found it, it directed me over to Severwind. It was the only path I could follow. I found a grove there, too, but what was left of it? Some kind of fiend, a hag, had destroyed it. I didn't find out what happened. I got away, barely, but hags have any connection to this black star? Could be. They like to meddle in all sorts of corrupting things. Hard to say, though. I'd have to see it for myself. This path you say it led you. He's pointing at the tablet. How? How did you follow it? When I found it, it was, I don't know, different. The map was only, a, a circle of runes were ignited, like there was some kind of energy in the stone. Once I found the grove and got there, it went dark, and I haven't been able to get it to do it to anything else. I've been mm. trying to find the old grove. Which old grove? I'll point to the area on the map that I thought recommended, uh, reference the one here. I thought mm. it'd be this one, considering this is, you know, the cradle. Yeah, that circle's here. Maybe we can try it, see what happens. The other thing, the vision that I saw, uh, I don't know how much Mother Widow told you about me and the guardian that I have, but she also mentioned that I need to read the leaves of the Vivis tree. Do you know what that might mean? Hmm. Well, I've read Bach before. Yeah, you, uh, I guess the closest word would be speak to it, to Vivis. Uh, sapling and seed. What's left of the Sigma, spread out so thin across this nor. It's the most direct connection we have to them. Maybe the, the spirit of nature will guide you further. Let's take you there. Okay. He whistles. The wolves come out. He hooks them up. Nods for you to get on the sled. Uh, slap on the reins as they... Tr 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 gliding through the snow. Sh sh weaving between the trees. As you can see animals, birds, and small creatures. Deer who kind of aren't as skittish and yet will still run when they're supposed to. Um, eventually you come to where you see the snow starts to melt away. 
the sled comes to a stop as far as it can go. Um, as you can see, grass underneath. You can see larger trees here. These trees are taller than any you've seen. The diameters are bigger than any you've seen. They almost create a columns, walls that form. As he guides you through the trail towards the center, you see surrounded by these massive columnist, nearly redwood trees, you see a few boulders, a small pond, a brook, a creek that travels through, and settled between that pond and boulders and creek is a small tree. It's not very tall, maybe only 20, 25 feet. Its boughs are sprout short. Some of the branches are low, only a few feet above the ground hanging. Uh, it looks something like a large bonsai tree. The boughs and roots almost intertwining with each other. As you see this tree almost uh, swaying, but not just in the wind, it almost can writhe itself. You see a number of individuals gathered around it, um, both uh, humanoids and beast sitting on the branches or nearby, sitting on stones and stumps, as Titus leads you up towards the Vivis tree. You can see as you get closer, the bark has swirling marks on it, but not carved or inscribed through druidic practice, but naturally grown in that pattern. You can see the leaves that hang down, the veins of which have similar runes, some of which almost look druidic, as if a related language. Well, wow. let's see what you got. It just kind of gestures for you to step up towards the tree. I'm just going to give a glance at Ellery. I've just been kind of wide-eyed ever since the talk of stars. But I, I look at Ezekiel, and I give his hand a quick squeeze. You know, I'm not going to mention anything to her. But I really wish I got to talk to that last tree. Yeah, I think things are, there are definitely some connections. Well, let's see what this one knows. And I will walk up to the tree, gently grab one of the leaves, and cast Speak with Plants. Oh, oh, there's a spell for this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I haven't prepared today. I figured I was going to have to do this. <laughs> Man, this is really good. <laughs> this is really good. Okay. So you cast this spell, and this tree that was writhing in the wind almost rightens itself as the boughs and roots sort of, sort of turn and grow in your direction slightly, as if turning to face you. You can almost see, as if a trick of the mind, a pattern coming out in the leaves. It's almost visible of a face that fades in, in and out. You can see the, the wind kind of dies down and yet picks up. It seems to dull all the other sound around you, um, the other chatter of the nearby keepers, momentarily blocking them out towards just you and the vivis tree. Oh. Hi there. I, I don't really know what to say, but I need your help. Help? Oh. I, I need knowledge or answers. Apparently the... Black Star is coming, and I'm supposed to do something about it. Answers or questions? What is the Black Star? Hmm. And you can almost see that pattern in the leaves that vaguely shows a face almost drifts up, the boughs lifting as if looking towards the sky. Um, you look as well, and as you do, your face is underlit. As you look down, the stone in your hand is dimly glowing. You can see different runes and symbols flashing on and off in different patterns. 
the face drew us back down towards you. Hmm. Constellation. Lock on the divine gate. Black star corrupted lock. Waystones, divine anchors. And you can see now the face is almost looking at the stone you hold in your hand. Constellations, heavens, ages, sword, scar, passion's birth, first lie. You can see he's saying these words, and as he does, a different rune pops up. And he sees it, and he recognizes it, and he says a word. I don't remember what they mean, but I know them. Seasons change, memories bone, the sun smile. A forbidden ritual. What can I do to stop it? Mm. Thought. Time. Something before returning. Signs. Arbinger. As the voice says this, with a voice of crackling bark and rustling leaves, it looks down at your stone once again, and both of you see those dim brooms that were ignited fade to where you can't see them. And you can see a ring beginning to form, glowing strangely dark um, in a circle before fading out. Oh, bring us warm. Of a return, find out what returns. I'll try. I will try to remember. I'm just a seed of myself. I am the father, and I am the son. What is left after the gate? <sighs> Memories fade. The face looks back at you. Questions? Uh... I don't think Ellery has heard any of the conversation, so I can't ask her for help. So... Ellery just hears like rustling of leaves and twisting branches, but nothing understandable. Can you teach me how to read this? I can Teach you a sign. Ah, bring it here. As you see branches twist like hands trying to grasp for the stone. I will hold it out. Ah. And you? Who are you? I am Ezekiel the Barbarak. A saint was chosen. Hmm. Nature. Seasons change. As you see the twigs that have formed fingers um, move and shift. You can see the leaves brushing against the stone, and a rune begins to ignite, glowing very dimly. You see this symbol form, this druidic rune. Hmm. Try. And you feel a sudden force come into you. A similar feeling to when you channel the spirits and power of nature to form lightning or wind. Um, you feel instead of you calling upon it, it comes into you um, and directs you towards the stone. Go ahead and make a wisdom check as you attempt to sort of channel this power, follow where it's trying to guide you. Okay. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Not say Wisdom check. That is a nine. <sighs> Remember when seasons change, 
when the harbinger comes. The voice stops. The leaves that were maintaining that pattern of a face fall back. And it's as if the tree branches and roots and leaves never moved, but you can suddenly no longer see the pattern. And where once you heard a voice, now you just hear the rustling of branches and leaves in the wind as you hold this stone out towards one of them. I will turn to Ellery and say, Okay. That's a little uh, alarming. Yep. Is everything... I take it everything is not okay. Well, I mean, Blackstar may be the lock on the Divine Gate, or possibly a corrupted version of it. Uh, I don't entirely know what that means, but it sounds bad. Yep, me neither. We should get back. Yeah. Uh, I will um, look to the Keeper. Oh, I'm blanking on his name because I'm... Titus? Titus. Great we'll stuff. Tito, which would have been very wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Tito, get over here. <laughs> Uh, he's, he's the keeper of the circle of hemp. <laughs> yes. I think... I think something very bad may be brewing. I don't know when, but this... I already thought this mission was big. This seems a little bit bigger. Have Willow let me know if she's planning on taking off. I'd like to see her before she leaves, but I, I think I need to... Go back to my companions. Somehow all of us are wrapped up in this, and we've been drawn to things that are important to this. I'll speak to her. I think she's speaking with Keeper Raste now. You should report to one of them before you move on. I think we'll be here for a while. I hope to talk to all of the Keepers in the area if I can. Good. You know where to find us. Thank you. He nods as you guys go back. Okay. And as you guys are heading back towards the city and the others have separated to accomplish various tasks in the holy city of Naimunet, Seker Dor, God's Rest. That is where we'll leave off tonight and we'll come back next week. Thank you for listening to this episode of Back to the Story. For notifications when an episode goes live, you can find us on Stitcher, Google Play, Player FM, or TuneIn. Download the app and subscribe or favorite us there. We also have a YouTube channel called Back to the Story, an actual play podcast. If you'd like to contact us, you can tweet us at back to underscore the story. If you can't fit it into 280 characters, you can email us at thebonfirefables at gmail.com. And if you'd like further information about the campaign, the player characters, or behind-the-scenes sneak peeks, follow us on either Twitter or our Tumblr website. Lastly, if you'd like to support the show, feel free to buy us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash back to the story.